Hey there! Welcome back to my channel. We are going to do a tutorial for the Gingerwood Shamrock. I've got all the materials used linked down below, so pull up your britches because this is going to be a doozy. So we're going to start out prepping our tumbler. I'm going to sand it, spray paint it, get some glitter on it. I would tell you what green glitter I used but it's kind of a hodgepodge at this point. I'll list a few of them that I know for sure down below. I use the epoxy method to apply my glitter. I feel it gives me the best coverage. So once that's glittered, I'm gonna apply two coats of epoxy so that it's nice and smooth and it needs minimal sanding. So once that's cured, I'll sand any spots that are necessary and I'll use my Dremel flap wheel to get the rim nice and cleaned up. So now we're ready to measure the cup in order to cut our pattern out. You don't want to cut your pattern out ahead of this unless you already know what this measurement's going to be because that glitter layer adds just a little bit uh, to the width so you want to make sure that you know what that is before you cut it. And this one is 9 and 3 8 So now we're ready to upload this to our software in order to cut it out. And because math is hard, use the calculator for 3 divided by 8 which is 0.375. So I'm going to upload both the square and the curved patterns. Um, just to demonstrate this, I'm using the PNG file. Um, the SVG file works pretty much the same. The PNGs are a bit larger. I attempted to make them smaller but I kept losing the details so I just left them as is. So now I'm going to import both of them. And I'm going to select the square pattern. And that's where I'm going to put that 9.375. So once that's in and adjusted, I'm going to take that height measurement and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it on the curved pattern because the height for both of these is the same. So that's going to allow you to adjust for that curved side width to get the proper width for wrap tumbler. And then changing the color here just to demonstrate that they are the same size. So now you can hide that square cut pattern and hit make it to send it to the machine. I also want to share here a bit of a pet peeve on what not to do uh, when working with this pattern. Make sure you keep the aspect ratio the same. If not, it ends up smushed, stretched, and it just doesn't look good. So I'll go ahead and send that to the machine, and I only wish it cut this fast. And this is probably the hardest part, weeding the actual pattern. I give it a 7 out of 10 on the difficulty scale. I'm using 631 removable, removable vinyl by Oracle and it's got a little bit of a stretch to it so I kind of have to help it along as I go. Sometimes um, little parts and pieces stick and I have to help push them back down. If I have something that's just completely unruly and comes up a lot of times I will take it off and set it to the side and I'll worry about putting it back where it goes later. And I do not recommend the band-aid method, pulling it off quickly. Uh, I tried it with this and this removable, removable vinyl just stretches and tears. It does weed a bit easier if you're using permanent vinyl. 
but I personally would only use permanent vinyl if I'm not removing it from the cup. So once you get towards the end here, you want to try to keep the vinyl you're, you are pulling off intact. Uh, I have yet to do this perfectly um, as many times as I've weeded this pattern. It doesn't seem to matter. I lose something at some point. So don't ball that up. Don't throw it in the trash. Just set it to the side because you're going to want to look over this pattern just to make sure you didn't miss anything. So after that, it's pretty much a recovery mission. You're going to uh, figure out where something's missing, get that vinyl back, and take it off there and put it where it goes. So once everything's in place, you can get your transfer tape. I'm using a Frisco, I believe it's called, transfer tape from Amazon. So I'm going to show you three examples of applying this pattern. The first one being a full wrap example. This is a skinny straight ounce, straight ounce? This is a skinny 20 ounce straight tumbler. And as you can see that pattern uh, comes together and once it's on you're not going to be able to know where the start and end of this decal is. So I'm going to lay that on, get it lined up how I like it. I don't use any tape or anything, I just kind of hold it as tight as I can to the cup. Um, use my other hand to peel back that transfer tape and cut a piece of the backing paper off. So then I apply that and I slowly peel back the backing paper um, while smoothing it onto the tumbler. The edge is a little tricky. After I um, get around I'm going to cut off the top and bottom because as you can see uh, this is taller than the cup and I don't worry about the height um, because of the I guess the busyness of this pattern you're not going to notice what was removed um, so that's why I don't really uh, worry about that height measurement and the transfer tape is also not a slow process it's a little bit tricky to get that off as well uh, you just want to make sure nothing is stuck to the transfer tape as you're pulling and that everything is, is attached to the tumbler itself so you have to get all of this up around the design in order to lay that other side down. Once you get it started it's a bit easier. Um, it's just those first few pieces that are pretty stubborn. Sometimes I've also had where I might rip something in the process of removing the transfer tape. I really don't fret that too much. Just press that transfer tape back down um, to put wherever it ripped back onto the cup. Um, attach it really well and just make sure you smooth out where it ripped because you're gonna end up peeling it off anyway so it's really not that that critical so now that's all lined up the next example is a straight seam so if you use the square pattern if it comes together and is not a perfect match that's okay I just use my knife to pick up the little pieces and line it up by hand. So here is uh, my final example, a 30 ounce curved tumbler, and this one I lay by hand. The top of the tumbler is fairly simple uh, because it's large enough in a flat area. I could pretty much cut the whole width of the pattern uh, to fit the top. once that's on there I like to have a copy of the pattern because I can see um, how each segment lays out and I'll cut each segment and then line it up on the cup so it's not going to line perfectly just because there is a taper uh, but you can get it pretty close to matching what the pattern is originally and if you don't follow the exact pattern Chances are, because this is busy enough, you're not going to notice. So 
so there really isn't a right or wrong way to hand place it. Once you get towards the end, uh, you'll probably have to take some little pieces here and there and just, just fill in the blank areas. There's really no wrong way to do it. So for this one I have a decal and I overlay the pattern on top of the decal. Uh, one reason is a lot of times I will pre-cut these patterns so I don't necessarily plan for what image or name I might use. So this just gives me flexibility. I have one offset on this picture and then I hand trim around and use that offset as a gap to give me a gap between the decal and the image itself. I do have uh, two tumblers I prepped and recorded. I'm going to put out a tutorial specifically on how I do my knockouts uh, for names and images like this just to give more detail on this process. You also want to make sure you have a sharp blade. Um, you're going to want it to cut pretty easily around the decal because if it's catching or not cutting then chances are it's too dull. So once I cut them, I lightly peel them off the decal itself. I really haven't ever had too many issues peeling them off. Um, they, they usually come off pretty easily. I actually learned this technique from Philip Tumblr maker uh, Modern Magnolia. She is amazing at what she does and I'll go ahead and link her down below as well so I highly suggest checking her out. Once you get everything cut around you can remove that offset. Uh, just be conscious that you're removing the right sections um, and don't get something accidentally. So with that, it's all set, everything's laid out, making sure everything's stuck down pretty well and ready for the next step. So this is the cup edging tool by Wicked Shimmer Supply that is also linked down below. I use this to get a nice clean edge on the top and bottom. and it works great. So with that done, ready to spray paint, let that dry, and get ready for alcohol inks. So I literally use a cut up t-shirt. I had some white t-shirts on hand that I never use anymore, and they work great for me. So I use three colors, uh, rosewood, sepia, and latte. And I start with the darkest color and transition to the lightest color. I wear gloves, otherwise my hands, uh, they don't look very good when I'm done if I don't. So I start out with rosewood and mainly I'm putting this on to get full coverage. I'm not too worried about, um, I guess, the direction or any of that stuff. I'm just trying to get it coated. And for some reason, the first coat seems to go on um, the hardest. Just, it doesn't give us as good a coverage. Once you get that first layer on, a little bit of ink goes a long way for the later colors. We're going to coat the whole thing with rosewood, then I'm going to transition right to my next color. I don't let anything dry, um, I just keep going with all three colors. And you can change the look based on how much pressure you use, 
um, how many times you go over it. Uh, essentially, I'm looking for those dark outlines around the vinyl, and I keep going until I'm satisfied with that look. Don't forget about the bottom. Just kind of blend that in. There you have it. So you're ready to peel. Uh, you do want to let that dry a little bit. You don't want to necessarily peel that right away. So you don't have to let it sit too long. Um, but let that dry. And then I like to use the straight piercing tool. Uh, this one is by Cricut. There is one uh, that I plan to try just because this one is fairly expensive and I've already damaged one of them. So for the touch-up, um, don't worry too much if you scratch the paint uh, or if some of the paint gets under where the vinyl was, you can fix that. So here I'm actually using that piercing tool where I got some alcohol ink underneath the vinyl and I use that tool to scrape it off. So I don't, I don't use alcohol, I don't want that anywhere near this cup because you'll just end up with a bigger mess. So I have found it best to scrape off anywhere that I see uh, paint or alcohol ink that has got to where the vinyl decals were. So once you put your next layer of epoxy, those are going to fill in. You're not going to see those scratches where you're scraping it off. If it's a really stubborn spot, you could use a knife. But I just found that this tool is sharp enough that it, it comes off fairly easily. And then there's sometimes you get spots where maybe your tool um, put a little dent in the paint. So I use the sepia, the middle color, put some of that in a cup, and I use a very fine paintbrush. So here's the fine paintbrush. And you don't need very much, just a very little bit. And you're just going to touch up those spots. And you never know. Maybe the first couple, um, if you haven't done peekaboos, you might have um, some bigger scratches or more. But the more you do these, the more you get a hang of it. But even still, I have them. So I just go around, make sure I look at everything, and try to get all the little touch-up spots taken care of. But as you can see, they kind of just disappear when you use the touch-up brush, which is great. So just keep looking around, make sure there's not spots you missed. And in the big scheme of things, don't sweat the small stuff.
once I had six of these tumblers made, um, I was able to get quite a few examples for you guys. So as I mentioned, don't fret this stuff. You can easily clean it up, fix it up. So if you get a scratch, just don't sweat it. Scratch what scratch, see? It's gone. Once all the touch-ups are complete, I don't seal or anything after this point, it is ready to go for the final coats of epoxy and that final cure. Here it is complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything we used is linked down below. Hopefully you subscribe, like, comment, share. If you make one, we would love to see it, and I hope you guys have an amazing day.